The Food and Agriculture Organization's United Nations is training 51 facilitators of the Farmers Field School FFS in the Northeast Zone, Nigeria. This strategic initiative is designed to build the capacity of facilitators so as to enhance innovations in the agricultural sector of economy. Declaring the training open in Medjugorje, Nigeria, the head of FAO Northeast Office, Al Hassan Sisse, said, FFS is a participatory approach in providing skills to farmers. The support also those who have been trained here to provide them with necessary support in order to implement what they have gained here in the, in the, in the, in the training. We have a program in the Northeast, program that support, that support farmers with uh, certified seeds and fertilizer during the rainy season. For the dry season also, we provide the same package of seed and fertilizer for different, uh, for different crop. Training is to be impactful on we the facilitators, whereby we can actually even take it back to the farmers and train them and make them more independent and also for the financial gain also, not just about farming, farming, farming and make it, ensure that our farmers become enterprise farmers. For long, our farmers were not, not trained well, sometimes they even forgot because of the insufficiency, they even forget what is happening in the field. So this, thing, this training will close their practices, agricultural practices, so that they will adopt the new innovation that will be provided by the training. Al Hassan said innovations comprised farm management, good practices in agriculture, livestock and fisheries in Bunu, Adamawa Taraba, Sokoto and Yobe states. Academic dons and lecturers of various universities are in Maiduguri for the third matriculation of the Borno State University. To be found worthy in character and learning, the student took an oath to be of good behavior during their stay in the academic environment. And to obey its constituted authority at all times. The school management and guests want the students to be committed in their academics. I implore the matriculants to imbibe the learning and reading culture, discipline, and strive to excellence, to behave scrupulously and to avoid contumacious behavior. The university cannot tolerate any deviation from these moral ethical values and disobedience to the constituted authorities. In other words, it will have zero tolerance on bad and poor moral characters. Your names shall be written not only with a common bio, but indelible ink. That is, if you maintain your academic pursuits in this university, if you maintain a clear record and do not do anything contrary to the purposes for which you are here. The newly inducted students promise to study hard to make their parents and institution proud. We are very, very grateful to all the executives of the school and our parents. We really appreciate their efforts. I promise to them that yes, I will come out with a very good result to them at the end of the day. I'm feeling happy. <laughs> Yes, and I'm very excited when we finish all our schools successfully. I will read hard and I will not make them ashamed, inshallah. I'm feeling very excited today. I promise that I will read hard to achieve all my aims. 2,425 students were inducted into five faculties of sciences, arts and education, agriculture and management sciences. Ashiwajibola Tirubu's plane touches down in Damaturu, Yobe State to meet with APC delegates. From Yobe, Ashiwajibola Tirubu proceeded to Meduguri International Airport in Borno State, where he was received by Governor Babagana Zulum. The first place of visit was the Palace of the Shehu of Borno. Thank you very much. Ashiwajibola Tirubu promised the people of Borno State that he will collaborate with the government of the state to put an end to the lingering security challenge. Economically, we are rich. What is lacking is courageous leadership who will face the track and do the job. By the will of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, inshallah, but we consider inshallah. The presidential aspirant moved to the government house to meet with 
APC delegates in the state. This gentleman sitting here has repeatedly endorsed northern Nigerians for the number one position in this country. In four electoral cycles. I want all of you to have me as the single candidate to be voted for during the presidential primary. Our prayers is to have the president that is visionary to motivation for what that, that is accepted to all Nigerians, and above all, has the capacity to inculcate inclusivity in its own administration. A candidate that will ensure indivisibility of our own country, which is also very important. And I think we have these characters. Governor Zulum appealed to Ashiwa Jutinubu to also consider Senator Kashim Shetima as his running mate. He was entertained by the state's cultural troupe. Borno State House of Assembly is playing a critical role in the steady development going on in Borno. The House is saddled with responsibility to make, amend and repeal laws including oversight functions of executive. Borno is one of the states that has remained in the news since 2009 when activities of Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria became global concern. The operations of the terror group no doubt dealt a big blow to the economy and created one of the most serious humanitarian crises that the world has ever seen. Boko Haram and the Nigerian government's efforts to fight it, we go to our Washington studio. Between 2011 and 2021, Boko Haram was responsible for thousands of deaths in Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger Republic. Nigeria is the country most affected by the terrorist group Setox. States in the northeast registered the highest number of deaths, but Borno by far the most affected. But the Borno story in the last two years has been taking a dramatic turn under the leadership of Professor Baba Genazimu. The governor came up with his 10 packed developmental agenda with massive investment in security, education, health, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and resettlement as his strategic approach to uplifting the standards of living of Borno people, especially the most vulnerable. Governor Zulum rekindled the hope of the people in the face of adversity with enormous support for the military, the civilian JTF, vigilante groups and local hunters who have been playing critical roles in maintaining the relative peace being experienced in Borno State. Professor Zulum has been consolidating on the gains of the previous administration in the education sector with mega schools built across the state, especially in the rural areas. He advanced the philosophy of education in Borno through creation of technical and vocational institutes across the three senatorial districts of the state. The Vocational Institute in Muna is training about 1,500 youth 
in different scales. The health sector also bears the stamp of Governor Zulum's forward-thinking leadership. Apart from upgrade of the state specialist hospitals, more primary healthcare centers have been built across the state, especially for those in the suburbs. The government has built more than 50 primary health care facilities across the state from the scratch. He has been working tirelessly to see the closure of all IDP camps in the state and resettle the people in the ancestral homes. So far, about 5,000 households have been resettled in the new homes built by the government. With massive road construction and rehabilitation works going on across the state, Borno is repositioning itself as a pace setter and model for development in the northeast region. All these joint strides and economic prosperity may not have come to manifestation without a strategic collaboration between the state executive and the legislative arms of governments. There was no motive whatsoever to remove our hardworking governor who restored people's confidence in our governance and Borno State in general. We, the members of Borno State House Assembly, passed a vote of confidence in the leadership style of Professor Engineer Babagana Umar Azrim. The House of Assembly has continued to show unwavering support for the administration of Professor Baba Ganazulu. The House has passed more than 20 executive bills which have received the governor's assent. The primary responsibility of a legislative member is to establish a law. So, apart from that, uh, establishing laws and oversight. So apart from that, uh, we do follow up uh, from the executive to see if that project has been done within our local areas. The governor's door is always open. We can reach out to him at any time when the need arises and his policies, he, he has a pragmatism uh, policies. He used to be straightforward. If he's going to do it, he will tell you he's going to do it. If he's not going to do it, he will still tell you that it's not possible. So we appreciate His Excellency with his performance. He's a man of people, a man who has pity over his citizens. Our relationship is very cordial. Red light, I say it. Every time, if there is any program that has to do with the progress of the state, Borno State House of Assembly doesn't delay. We try as much as possible to see that we give our best for the governor to succeed. Uh, the governor happened to be a person who counts Borno people much in his heart, more than even himself. You see him moving day and night to see that our people have a livelihood. Even if, even from the presence of the insurgency, the governor has never had one day to be on his own. He always be with his people. And uh, any uh, budget that government bring to the House of Assembly, we usually give expeditious passage because we know who the man is. The Borno State House of Assembly, under the leadership of Right Honorable Abdul Karim Lawan, has continued to play a critical role in the development of Borno and torching the lives of residents through his legislative works and oversight functions. Had a chat with the Speaker, Borno State House of Assembly, Honorable Abdul Karim Lawan. He says, strong synergy between the legislative arm of government and the executive is responsible for the successes recorded by the administration of Governor Baba Gala Zulu. To Borno Restoration, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Okay. Tepida. So, sir, as the Speaker of Borno State House of Assembly, yes. what effort is a state assembly doing to ensure that Borno becomes a great place? 
Uh, Alhamdulillah, we thank the Almighty Allah for finding ourselves in this position as a speaker and honorable members of the Bono State House of Assembly. Uh, Bono State House of Assembly is always a very cooperating House of Assembly with the executive arm of government because we are always doing our best to ensure that people of Borno State has gotten a livelihood because we are always assisting the executive governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Umara Zilim, to achieve all his desired goal. We are working hand in hand with him so that Borno State will move forward. That is what we are doing. Okay, and now, what bills have you passed to ensure that people in the state enjoy the dividends of democracy? Yes, it's about 30 bills. That is, uh, I can uh, count some of the bills, but it's not all. Mm. Uh, education Trust Fund Bill, we have already passed this bill into law. It's already existing in Borno State right now. Uh, security Trust Fund, uh, Public Requirement, uh, College of Health Technology, uh, then the Geographical Information System. There are so many bills that we pass in now, the in last this, two years. Okay, so in these bills that you've passed, I'd yeah. like to know how many of them have been now um, working? In yes, all the bills. All the bills are working in Borno State okay. right now. All the bills, bills that we passed within these two years already taken uh, position to work in Borno State. So how has the State Assembly helped the people of Borno in, in terms of education, health and other aspects? Yes, uh, we in the House of Assembly, we are always uh, advising the state government to also provide education to the children, uh, people and children of Borno State. Because, uh, you know, Borno State, uh, we are suffering in the hands of these insurgencies for the last 11 to 12 years. So our children are suffering from the hands of this Boko Haram. They are not getting better education. So that's why we are always advising the Executive Governor of Borno State, His Excellency Professor Babagana Umara Zilim, to give better education to the people of Borno State. So thank God the Governor has uh, acted to our advice and also he is also an educationist, agriculturist. He knows the value of education. So he has constructed so many schools in Borno State, that is the mega school, primary school, secondary school. If you can see, if you go around the city of Meduguri, you can see so many mega schools built by the governor of Borno State, Professor Babagana Omar Azil. When you go to Abuja Talakawa, you can see a mega school comprising of 30 classrooms, which was uh, built uh, during his two years' term. And also, if you go to uh, Moramti, that is along my Duguri Kano Road. Mm -hmm. You can see mega school comprising of 60 classrooms, also constructed and completed right now on existence. Uh, if you go to Muna, you can see uh, mega school for about 50 to 60 classrooms. Mm -hmm. So it is uncountable. Mm -hmm. This is the sums of the schools that he built within the state. Um, so, sir, we yeah. would like to know, yeah. within all these bills passed by the State Assembly, yes. is there any bill among these ones that interest you the most? Uh, yes, exactly. That is the Security Trust Fund Bill. Uh, this bill is very important to the people of Borno State because it will going to take care of our civilian JTF, the vigilante, not only the civilian JTF or vigilante, it, is also, it will also going to assist by providing logistic support mm -hmm to the Nigerian military, the Nigerian police, the Niger civil defense, and all other paramilitary agencies. So I think this bill is very important to our people by providing them uh, logistic support. After the passage of the security bill, yes. how has it improved the security situation in the state? Yes, exactly. After we passed this bill, this bill into law, the, you can see there are so many helix, blue helix, newly brand new Hilux car. You can see where they're walking around inside the town. So that is the, uh, some of the logistics, that very important logistics that will uh, this our agency 
will provide to the civilian JTF and also the vigilantes as well as the Nigerian military and also the civil defense and the police. So this bill is now uh, very good for our own people and also very good for our, for our security in the state. So it's very important that so the level and the security was improved. Yes, it's yeah. it been improved. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. We would like to know the comparison between 2015 till date in terms of security. That's a very good question. It is uh, there are so huge difference different between 2015 and now. If you can remember, I don't know uh, during 2015 you are here in Maiduguri or no. In 2015 and 2014, somebody like uh, Speaker or Member House of Assembly or Senator or House of Representative cannot able to go around inside Maiduguri. You cannot able to go to any ceremony in Maiduguri because these guys are living inside the town at that time. When they see any big car politician or any big businessman, they were going to shoot it. That is somewhere around 2013 to 2015. So Alhamdulillah, after the emergencies of the emergence of this administration of uh, for example, Muhammad Buhari in 2015, Alhamdulillah, today we have uh, better because now you can go anywhere in my degree, either in the night, in the daytime, or in the morning. So we have no problem in the state capital. Our problem is only the outside my degree, that is the local government areas. But even the local government areas, some are, alhamdulillah, we have gotten a peace, but some are not. But inshallah, in the next one to two years, I'm sure the issue of Boko Haram will going to be over. You've mentioned quite a lot of things you've achieved. Yeah. So what plans are you having ahead? Yes, alhamdulillah, there are, you, you can see there are so many schools built by this administration which is uh, yet to take off. Mm. But inshallah in the next turn, uh, one to two years, next two years, inshallah you can see all this school has been taken off. All this uh, hospital will be fully equipped mm. within one to two years, next two years, so that they can also go to take off mm. and our people will benefit in the education sector and the health sector. Thank you very much for your time on yeah. your restoration. Yeah. Speaker, Bernosid House of Assembly, Honorable Abdul Karim Hilawan.